We are back with you at Mac Aldridge Field as the high school sports year begins. It is September and that means fall sports are here. Hello again everybody, I'm Evan Massoud. Welcome to Fred TV's sports coverage here right on Channel 9. We have a great opening day matchup between Durfee and Diamond in boys soccer. What better than a rivalry game to start off the new year? Durfee's coming off an incredibly successful 2016. They were big three champs. They also made it into the second round of the playoffs where they lost a heartbreaker right here on their home field. Now for Diamond, they're warming up as well on the field and they're here because their field is getting a makeover. Brand new sod has been put on the field at Diamond and it will be ready hopefully in a month or so. We don't have an official timetable, but it has to settle and take root before it can be played on. So Diamond's the home team today, but they're playing at Durfee's home. So should be a lot of fun, and we hope you stick around for all the action here on Fred TV. All right, we are just about ready to get the 2017 fall season underway. Again, Durfee and Diamond in a great rivalry match here from Durfee's Mac Aldridge Field. Players shaking hands beforehand. Should be a lot of fun. You may notice Diamond wearing some new colors here. They're sporting navy blue and orange instead of the traditional black and orange we've seen from Diamond for years. So they are in the dark blue, the navy blue with the orange numbers. Durfee with the red shorts and white tops and red numbers. Here in Fall River, we got a 3.30 start, or just a little after, a little bit of a late start. 76 degrees, partly cloudy skies, it says, but it's really mostly sunny. It's a beautiful day for opening day soccer. We are underway. Again, Diamond is the home team, so uh, that's why they're listed on the bottom of the scoreboard. They are actually the home team in this matchup, playing here at Durfee because of the, the new field over at Diamond. Centering pass is kicked away. Uh, Diamond with a little bit of a rough start, I guess you could say, because uh, preseason their senior goalie shattered his ankle before the season began and unfortunately for him his high school career basically over because of that. So a uh, devastating injury for the Bengals. Coach uh, John Chicaro telling me this when we were chatting on the field pre-game and uh, so that's a disappointment for, for Diamond, for sure. And I'll tell you one thing, you know, it might be uh, a beautiful day in terms of the sun, and let me tell you, it is about as windy as we've ever seen it here high atop the press box at Durfee. A corner kick heading towards the goal, and it is no good. A big bunch of players there, but nobody could rally and get it in there. That was Taylor Gonzalez, one of Durfee's captains in number six. He just passed it. Now he's heading up the field and clearing it out there. Looked like Alex Cabral, number 27. Uh, but yeah, it is wicked windy is the best way to describe it up here. Uh, coming in from the south, so uh, Durfee's going to have the kicking advantage. There's a trip, and we're playing on. No whistles early. Bengals trying to turn it around. That was Neil Souza, number 11. And that is just outside. Oh, that happened pretty quickly. No goal, though. Uh, but yes, the wind coming in, heading to the north. And uh, so Durfee in this first half will get to kick with the wind. A definite advantage for the Hilltoppers. We'll switch sides at halftime. 40 minute halves here in high school soccer. And actually, that ball floated and tra oh, traveled all the way to the 50. So. Diamond kicking into the wind. Actually had a little more luck with it than, than I would have thought. Had some good distance. Now we'll play the head game as we volley it off the noggin. That one gets away. Bengals chasing after it. They'll send it to the goalie. And there is Lucas Souza. Lucas had a great season last year. Centering pass. Beautifully done, but that's no good. And it actually stay in the field while the wind kicked that one back. I thought it was heading towards the uprights and it actually stayed on the field. William Sobrero, another returner. He's another captain. Gabe D'Oliveira, the third captain for Durfee. There are a lot of seniors on this team, a lot of juniors who were, you know, involved in varsity last year in, in some respects. So Coach Mello was telling me that while they did lose six key guys to graduation, 
this is still a very familiar group. There's some good team chemistry. It's not like they're all coming in totally cold and they've lost, say, you know, a dozen or so players. It, they were key players, but at the same time, there's a lot of returners. I mean, I'm looking at the number of seniors here as Diamond forging ahead, trying to grab a 1-0 lead, and it is stopped by the Hilltoppers goalie, Armando Franco. One of the goalies for Durfee last year was uh, Mr. Boner, and he... Uh, he actually graduated as well, so a new goalie for the Hilltoppers. Nice stop there, really on the first chance for Franco, the junior. But one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. By my count here early, eight, nine, ten. Ten seniors on this team, and uh, a number of juniors, at least a half a dozen juniors too. So look at that ball travel again with the win, cleared away from uh, by the Bengals that looked like that was Dominic Rocha number 18 oh my bad that was actually number 10 that was Dylan Harrop Dominic Rocha plays uh, midfield and coach Chicaro was uh, speaking very highly of him as a senior it says he's grown a lot and he's definitely a leader on this team for the Bengals uh, we got a soccer ball on the field of play looks like it skipped away from uh the practice field. Oh, we'll await the kick from Dylan Ferreira, the keeper. Or the goalie, different terms, obviously. You can, goes either way, tomato, tomato. That's gonna go out, we'll have a throw in as well. Give you some game notes here uh, from Coach Tiberio Mello for the Hilltoppers, he was Given the honors of receiving one of the coaching awards for the Big Three and the MIAA had, again, such a great season last year, did Coach Mello and the Hilltoppers. And uh, as he said, you know, one thing that he did reiterate, as, as I was just saying, is that Durfee uh, has gelled. These guys are familiar with each other, which is very important. You know, when you only have such a, you have such a short turnaround time from when official practices can begin to the first game of the year. And of course, you know, they say with, you know, racing, say NASCAR racing, seat time is everything. Time in the car and driving is, is where you get your experience. Well, the same can be said with this. You know, coming into a season cold, this being the first game, these live action moments and time on the on the field it, it it always always will surpass any type of practice so um you know field time game time is there's no substitute so getting into this game here today is uh the first step really in in getting things going those practices early uh it helps to gel it helps to have some team chemistry but nothing will beat playing in an actual game to really see where you're at that's going to go behind the net behind the goal line and it'll be a goal kick. So so this is always a, f a tester really for uh, any coach, these opening day games. They kind of have an idea, but uh, for example, Coach Chicaro, I asked him who his captains are. He says, we're gonna make a decision after today's game. I said, okay. So Diamond does not have official captains. They're waiting to see how these guys do in an actual game. So uh, everybody's got a different approach, but having these game game minutes, the, the true field time, it, you just can't beat it. So that's out of play, a little trip again, but I don't see a win. No, it's just going to be a Durfee ball, going to throw it in. Or they are going to have a free kick. We'll see. You can hear the wind <laughs> picking up again. There will be a free kick here, right about the 50 at midfield. Of course, if you're new to soccer, um, the layout here, we're not looking at the football markings, of course, the 20, the 10, 20, 30, 40, et cetera. Uh, the, the soccer markings, although faded, uh, they are the yellow markings. So there's the yellow circle at midfield that goes from the 40 to the 40. And then the boundaries are also in yellow. Uh, they don't show up as well, but the field is 10 years old. Probably could use some paint on those lines, but Albeit still better than uh, having to contend with muddy, grassy conditions after, uh, say, any rain. This field, the field turf here, the artificial surface, is really, uh, really the way to go. It was a great move by the school department. 
when this was put in 10 years ago, my senior year here at Durfee. Of course, uh, you may be wondering, too, uh, someone lost a shoe. <laughs> the back the back of the field there it looked like a shoe. Yeah, one of the Diamond players. Talk about agony of the feet there. Thank you very much. <laughs> We have two uh, alumni here, graduated from Fred TV last year, up on the press box with me. Great to have them back. One working, one just being a spectator, but that's okay. But, uh, you know, you may be wondering, I mentioned about Diamond's uh, new field. So uh, they did not put in the artificial surface, and I know some of you may be wondering why, um, because Diamond certainly gets plenty of water on that field when it rains. If you've ever been to uh, the football stadium at Diamond, it's at the bottom of a major embankment. I mean, we're up here on the press box. We're probably twice as high on the press box at Diamond uh, above the field. So that gives you an idea of how high that embankment really is. The water just drains right down. Um, so, but the reasoning for the uh, the sod versus artificial turf, um, and I spoke with Superintendent Tom Aubin about this. So I asked him, I said, why not put the artificial surface in? And he said, well, he says, you know, we're trying to, as it's been in the news uh, over the last couple of years, trying to get a new school. Of course, Durfee made this most recent cut, and that's why Durfee is in the process now with the wheels in motion to, um, in fact, a rendering has already been been put up on the web of what they want the new Durfee to look like. So things are really in the works for, you know, Durfee 3.0, as we're calling it. But for Diamond, um, you know, they, there are issues with their building as well. I don't think they're as extensive as Durfee's, although I don't have an official study. But um, they are trying hard to get a new Diamond as well, um, you know, especially with all the, the shops and the, being the vocational school. All that stuff has to stay current. And... Um, you know, because especially with safety codes and regulations as well. So they are trying hard. Uh, they missed the last the last cut, which I believe is what Durfee got in on, if memory serves correct. And um, so they're trying, though, and it, it is very possible within the next, you know, five years or so that you could be hearing serious talks and the wheels could be in motion for a new diamond. So the superintendent over at Diamond, Mr. Aubin, saying, you know, we don't want to spend a million dollars on a field when... They may have to look to the fields as a possible building site, just like we're going to be doing here at Durfee. That's at least the plan, is where the tennis courts are currently, and the JV baseball field and the softball field. There's a very good chance that that's probably where the school's going to go. That's at least where the official site plans um, show in the renderings that we've seen. The stadium here is supposed to stay, as well as the practice field and the varsity baseball field, but... They're going to have to build somewhere, and we have to have a place to uh, continue working and educating while the building is going up. So we can't just demolish the existing building and build there. And we'll have no high school to work in <laughs> or teach in or have the students learn in. So right now the plan is right along Ellsbury Street is where the front of the building will be. It'll be street side. It's not going to be kind of buried in the back. And it really looks awesome. If you go on the web uh, on Facebook, there's a page, Durfee Rising, and um, there are there were some photos put on that um, of what the new school would look like and uh, what the site plans are for these grounds. And uh, it, it is a real wild concept. It'll almost it'll look more like a campus than it even does now. Um, so definitely exciting stuff. But uh, again, Diamond may have to look to build on their field as well, which. You know, then you've thrown a million dollars away on a field, so on, on AstroTurf, field turf. So um, smart move. The, the sod needed replacing without a doubt. The bad news is <laughs> Diamond's not going to really have any home games this fall. That one's sent out of play. Quick throw in by the Hilltoppers. That one got deflected out off of uh, Taylor Gonzalez. He tried to send that one uh, net side, but didn't work. That's going to go out of play. And I believe that's going to be Diamond Ball. It is. So throwing it in will be Neil Souza, number 11. And I strike that. Colin Mello, who will throw in for him. Butted out of play off the head by Nil and Nera. 
Coming up on about 15 minutes into this 40 minute first half. So almost at the halfway mark, no score. As you see on the scoreboard on the bottom of the screen there, 0-0. Zero, zero. That was, uh, looked like Lucas Souza. It was going down to the ground, kicking it out of play. This time, Souza does throw in. That's Neil Souza for Diamond. And the topper's goal keeper, Armando Franco, comes out. Soft kick to Lucas, centering to Gonzalez, and he couldn't handle it there. Lost his footing. So Neil Souza will throw in again. Now the wind really uh, coming in almost from the east or so. So it's kind of going across the field more so than uh, more so than uh, coming up and down the field. So uh, the ball really not being too affected by the wind in terms of kicking up and down the field. It, it looks pretty good. It's getting good distance both ways. Souza sends it back into the offensive zone there for the Hilltoppers. Coming back to midfield. Going to bounce at the 50. And Ethan Williams, a sophomore, turning it around. It is Ruan Ferreira. I hope I said that right. Coach, uh, Coach Mello gave me the... The pronunciation here, and I hope I said that it's with the H, Juan Ferreira is Lucas Souza. He's going to send it towards the net. Going to bounce one hopper, and it is handled by Dylan Ferreira. Holding on to it, letting the, his teammates. Yeah, that's a good kick. So the wind uh, not really playing too much of a factor with the ball. Not Again, not as much as I thought it would, because it's definitely... It's definitely gusty out on the field and up here on the press box. Gonzalez forging ahead, bouncing ball. Ball is loose, a collision, and the time will be called. Stoppage of play by the officials. That's a nasty collision there between the goal goalkeeper. And I'm trying to see who that was. Looks like they're both okay, which is good. That looked to be for Durfee uh, Ferreira, Ron Ferreira. And this should be a uh, free kick for Diamond, I believe. And indeed it is, as the, the foul was called on Durfee. And that makes a lot of sense because the goaltender had, the goalkeeper had the ball. And then it was jarred loose on the collision. So a free kick for Ferreira. Nil and Nera deadens the ball. There goes Gonzalo Royas. And a missed opportunity there to get it to his teammate. It wasn't kicked quite hard enough. The Bengals trying to take it back over. Out of play it goes. And Durfee will throw it in. There is Royas again. Out of play. This should be diamond ball. Colin Mello will do the honors. Going to go right up the line. Good, strong throw there, almost about 30 yards. Looks like the Hilltoppers are going to get a free kick out of this. It's the uh, crowd below us telling the official what a foul is. <laughs> Gotta love it. Going to send this hard towards the goal. Oh, it's going to fade a little bit. Ball is loose, sent towards the net. Didn't get a good look at it. And we'll stay scoreless as that went wide to the right. Again, kind of slipped off the toes there. I see it too. That looks like it might be number 20, uh, Jonah Andrade. Again, we always have this struggle. It's tough to read these numbers from up on the box, I can tell you that. Not the easiest thing in the world. It's a great view, but 
they got to make those numbers a little bigger. I know my eyesight's not going, that's for sure. Backing up on it is Nil and Nera, trying to let it settle. He does. Ethan Williams loses it. Bengals on the attack. There is Dominic Rocha, and he is overpowered by Nil and Nera, but it goes out. Luckily for Durfee, it goes out on the sideline just shy of the corner, so it'll be a throw, and it won't be a corner kick. And doing the throwing is going to be Neil Souza. That wind picked up again. Trying to keep it in and work around defensive pressure right on the line. Out of bounds. Lucas Souza with a quick pick up there and he's going to find William Sobrero. A collision there. They help each other up. Sobrero and Mello collided. No whistle. And we'll see Royas throw it in to Sobrero. I like Diamond's defense early. Durfee has really not had any opportunities. And that's something Coach Jacaro said, you know, said we're going to focus on more defense when we play Durfee. He says if we can keep them at bay and take advantage of some mistakes, we could come out on top. So they were focusing on D. We've got a corner kick here. Low kick. Blocked. Well, that sent D. <laughs> Deep and it stays in play. Thought it was going to go out. Or did it? We're slowing up. Yeah, it looks like it did go out of play. So uh, I think that was Nil and Nero there in the back. Nope, my bad it was not. That's uh, Nilan's in the middle here. So, But needless to say, one of his teammates did keep that in, at least kept them from having to chase it out. Waiting a kick from Ferreira, and there it is. Souza sends it to us the sidelines, finding Royas. Royas going to Sobrero. Nice little move there, going one-on-one -on -one with Mello. Gonna go out on the goal line, and it looks like they're calling for a goal kick. Nice job by Mello to uh, kick that off of Sobrero, rather than waiting for the ball to just roll out, because that probably would have resulted in a corner kick. But he kicked it off of the Durfee player, gave the ball back to his keeper. We are at the 19-minute mark here in the first half. Actually, a little more than that, I should say. Uh, about the 18-minute mark So, of the first half, and we are scoreless here at Mac Aldridge Field. Durfee and Diamond in boys soccer. Evan Masood with you. Thrilled to be back for another year of high school sports. Boy, the summer was quick, huh? But I will tell you this, that after doing, let's say, March, April, May, or end of March, we'll say, so mostly April, May, and then the summer covering baseball as well, I'm pretty happy to be doing something other than baseball. Need a change. So fall, we have uh, field hockey, soccer, boys and girls. We have girls volleyball. And we have probably my favorite, football. So um, a great variety. Fall is always probably my favorite season. Um, it's tough when you deal with weather conditions. But um, game-wise, I love doing fall sports. Basketball is always a blast. but um, Basketball and hockey but in the wintertime. But... I really, truly enjoy doing these games in the fall because it's always warmer than the spring and you get to be outside, so. Sobrero waiting, he's in basically, it was like a Bermuda Triangle of diamond players, they're all colliding in on him. Got the ball free, but now headed back to midfield and the backfield for Durfee, that was number 27, Alex Cabral, had to send it back and uh, keep it. Keep it on uh, Diamond's side and keep Durfee on the offensive. There is Lucas Souza. So everybody kind of pressing upward a little bit. The defenders for the Hilltoppers playing right about at midfield. Souza lost it, tripped up, no whistles. That was uh, that was Nick Silva going down to the turf. No worse for wear though. Saburo playing nice move there 
Blocked, though, by one of the Bengals. That's sent towards the net. Got to turn and send it. Cannot. Loose ball. Who wants it? Nobody. The Diamond Bengals take it over. That was Ferreira. He had a wide open shot and couldn't get there. The Bengals were placed perfectly. And then he lost the ball. Lucas Souza pushed out. That's a free kick. Foul on the Bengals. And let's see, that was number 15. That was Nick Silva all the way back. This part of the field, he plays midfield, so gets a lot of running in, that's for sure. Souza elects to uh, go back to Alex Cabral rather than forge ahead. So they passed it back between defenders. A little fake there on the far side off the head, and now Hilltopper's trying to settle it. That did not look good. Maybe getting spiked. Wrong place at the wrong time. Looks like we're okay, but that'll be another free kick. I've seen a few of these go in over the years between Durfee boys or, or girls. I can recall uh, one of the girls' games. Geez, I forget who it was, but uh, it was such a great kick. It was actually from about almost at the 50, a midfield free kick, and the, it just sailed right over the goalie's head into the back of the net, and there was just no stopping it. It was a great, great kick. A little bit of arguing going on here. Again, this is a good rivalry. Different divisions, but this is a great rivalry here between Diamond and Durfee. They all know each other, they're friends off the field, but they want to beat each other bad when they're on the field. Little floater, not high enough. Diamond deadens the ball. Kick towards the goal line and out of play. It'll go off of Durfee. That was Ethan Williams who sent it out of play. So another goal kick for the Bengals. Wow. That wind is amazing. It's got to add at least a 30 mile an hour gust. And now we got one little cloud. We'll have sun in a minute. Hilltoppers have had the ball on Diamond's side of the field quite a bit over the last, say, 10 minutes of play. But again, no real great breaks or opportunities. I mean, the Bengals are doing a good job kind of containing the Hilltoppers' offensive push. The thing is, is how long can they sustain that? That's the next question because you know, the Hilltoppers have gotten some chances. These free kicks have been, uh, been helpful, but it hasn't really paid off. Always give you a good chance whenever you get the free kick, but they have not paid off for the Hilltoppers yet. Centering pass. Towards the net, just wide and outside. Ethan Williams tried to score the first goal of the season for the Hilltoppers, but it goes wide to the left. And in any case, uh, Ferreira was in a good position to block that anyway. He was on that side, so probably would not have gone in. But that's what's gonna happen. You know, we say this all the time, it's just like hockey. You know, you gotta take these shots. If you don't take a shot, it's not gonna go in. And we got a timeout. Timeout on the field. So really a um, pretty quiet first half, to be perfectly honest. Uh, we got about 10 plus minutes or so after this timeout, but uh, not a very action-packed first half for a rivalry game, and that could be, you know, some rust, some residual rust, if you will, from the offseason. Uh, but it also could just be that both teams are being real possessive of the ball and not allowing the other to get any good looks. Diamond really hasn't seen much action on the offensive side in the last 10 or 15 minutes. Um, Durfee has had more of an offensive press, but still nothing really to show for it. Not many shots on net. 
Or maybe the timeout is just what the doctor ordered. Got a pretty good crowd here on uh, this Tuesday afternoon. Not a major crowd. You know, we'd have more more of a presence if uh, school was in session. But today, actually, is not the first day of school for the high school. Tomorrow is. Um, we start school on Wednesday. So today was just a, a staff day. And opening day for the teachers been the full-time staff, basically. So um, you're not going to see that contingency of students sitting right below us in the middle of the bleachers for Durfee cheering on the team. Some fans from Diamond, though, across the way as well, you see. So not a bad crowd, but smaller than usual. Looks like we're ready to resume play here. Clock has restarted. Ferreira will kick it out. Well, later this week, we will have on Friday opening night football. Another whistle, and uh, boy, some of the Hilltoppers going down hard. Some tough fouls here. Getting tangled up, the two teams are. But yes, opening night football is Friday, 7 o'clock, right here at Mac Aldridge Field. And uh, Somerset Berkeley Blue Raiders will be in town. The Hilltoppers. Uh, I've had a tough go of it against SB over the last two openers. Uh, last year they opened at Somerset, and then the year prior they were here, and they're 0-2 in those matchups. And, you know, Somerset's uh, offense, always tough. They, they really go with a three-man option. Good block there. I like the trickery from the Hilltoppers, but again, no luck. Diamond's defense was placed perfectly, but, yeah, we'll see... Uh, Somerset Berkeley's offense, see what they do. I mean, again, typically they go with a a three-option formation. Can I have a corner kick for the Hilltoppers? That one high off the head, and Bengals volleying it around. <laughs> Not letting the Hilltoppers in. That's coming towards the side here. Lucas Souza trying to turn it around. And it'll come back up the sidelines. But yeah, Somerset's uh, football offense always tough to read because with the three options, the three-man option in the back there, anybody can take it or hand it off. They almost never pass. And Bishop Stang, uh, they actually have a similar offense that they featured a couple years ago when we did a game here. I think they passed the ball one time in the entire game. Uh, other than that, it was all running the ball with the option. So it's tough to read because you have three guys that could take the ball and you just never know who it's going to be. And then they, you know, they'll crisscross pattern. And I mean, really, it's, it's a tricky offense. Loose ball. Gonzalez sends it towards the net. Ferreira with the scoop. So and then, of course, the Hilltoppers uh, will come in after the big Thanksgiving Day win last year. A great end to the season. So should be a fun game. Durfee has not won on opening day in uh, a long time, so it would be a fun way to start the season with a win. Somerset will certainly give them a challenge, that's for sure. So that game's Friday, and we'll have it on the air on Monday. So this week we'll have the soccer game on. You're seeing soccer now. And the next week, uh, well, starting on Monday, we'll have the opening night football game on the air from Friday night. Nilanera forging ahead. He goes down. After one of the Bengals went down. And Diamond on the offensive here, trying to turn it around, and it's going to go out. It should be a corner kick for the Bengals. Looked like it went out off of Durfee. And indeed, it will be a corner kick for the Bengals. So this really their first opportunity. And you can see from the wind, the flags in the corners have actually toppled on this side of the field. The Bengals trying to steal an early 1-0 lead after being pretty quiet offensively. That's a grounder, and it's popped up, sent towards the 25, and the Bengals played off the head. That was uh, uh, Souza. No, oh, pardon me, Harrop, Dylan Harrop. Durfee going to throw it in, and Diamond will bounce it right back across midfield. Here's a trip. No whistle that time. Three on two for the Bengals. They'll send it towards the net. It's going to go wide to the right. Under 10 minutes to play in the half. A 
Franco will kick it out. Soft grounder, didn't, dis didn't kick it into the air. Try a little bit of ball control. Nice passing by Durfee. Keeping it on the ground. Moving across midfield. That is number 19, Kyle Neves. Oh, and Gonzalez missed it. Had a great opportunity. That was textbook passing right down the field by the Hilltoppers. That's great ball control. Neves going after it, and it should be a corner kick. Oh no, they're kicking it in. Uh, throwing it in, rather. Good strong throw towards the net. Right into the hands of Ferreira. That ball really floated, going against the wind and didn't want to come down. Hilltoppers, that's probably one of the best opportunities to score in this first half. Going all the way down from one end of the field to the other. Another centering pass, a little bit too far back. Diamond gonna send it back up midfield. Good speed on that far side for the Bengals. They have a man breaking towards the net. Up the ladder is Franco for the block and reeling that one in. Gets it quickly to Neves on this side. There is Sobrero to Gonzalez. Nice move by Gonzalez. We're gonna go to the far side now. Getting bunched up a bit. Gonzalez goes down. Somehow he comes back to get it. And he eventually loses it. Bengals gonna go back on the offensive here. Up the field. Gonzalez working very hard to get free. There's Nil and Nera. Ah, handball, so it's gonna be diamond ball. As the clock continues to wind down on this first half. Six minutes on the clock. No score. Off the head, Nilanera sending it to the sidelines. It'll go out of play. Diamond will throw it in. Should be Diamond Ball. Neil Souza is going to throw it in from uh, about the 30 yard line. Going to throw backwards to number seven. That's uh, Cody Aruda, a sophomore. And a free kick coming again, it appears, for Diamond. As uh, going down, that was Dominic Rocha. Looks like Arud is going to do the kicking here. Going to float it far side, sent towards the sidelines, cleared out by the Hilltoppers. It'll go out of play in front of their bench. But at least it's out of the square there, the goalie's zone, if you will. Topper's trying to move the ball ahead again and break this scoreless tie before the half. Gonzalez stops it, almost lost it. Has to retreat, sends it to his teammate on the far side. They're gonna send it towards the net, a bouncer. Ferreira dribbled it once in his hands and he makes the play. Gonzalez has been in the right place at the right time about three times in the last, uh, say, 15 minutes or so, but not able to finally penetrate through that last bit of defense to take the shot on net. It's been robbed a couple times. He's due. Royas trying to make a move, has to retreat. Lucas Souza sends it towards the middle. There is Sobrero 
to Nev's, gonna get on his horse, it's gonna go out of play. And it'll be a goal kick. Out of play. Durfee loses possession again. So at the two minute marker, the clock will freeze and then we will have, uh, that'll be the stoppage time. Good strong kick from Ferreira. Off of Souza. Should be diamond ball. Neil Souza will throw it in. And we are officially in stoppage time. Clock frozen at two minutes. And we'll play now till the whistle. Not too much stoppage time, but there was uh, and we had to set up for some of those free kicks and that's out. Whistle is blown though, so let's see. Looks like they're calling a the foul on Durfee. That was gonna go out of play, it appeared. And I think if it had gone out of play, that would have been a corner kick for Durfee because it sure looked like Diamond was the last to touch it, but then the whistle was blown. So Durfee losing out on what was a possible corner kick there at the end of this first half. Nevs, that is sent way out of play. <laughs> Wide to the left, another goal kick. Wind might have played a factor that time. It is really gusting again. It kind of slowed down a bit and calmed it down a bit, but now really crazy windy. Down the field. One lonely bangle in a sea of hilltoppers. Durfee takes it away. Nice turnaround there. Hilltoppers moving it ahead. And another whistle. Hilltoppers committing a bevy of fouls in the last 10 minutes or so. This latter half of the first half. A lot of free kicks for the Bengals. And there is the end of the first half. We are scoreless here from Durfee High School. In opening day soccer, the Bengals and Hilltoppers in a stalemate here after 40 minutes of play. We'll have the second half next on Fred TV. Welcome back to Mac Aldridge Field. Evan Massoud with you on Fred TV. It's opening day soccer between Diamond and Durfee. Again, Diamond the home team in this match because they can't play on their field yet after the sod was replaced about a week and a half, two weeks ago. So. We play on here at Mac Aldridge Field. This rivalry match between two Fall River schools. It is a scoreless game after one half. Nothing, nothing the score. And uh, Derby had a couple chances later in the game. Uh, later in the first half, I should say. Uh, Diamond, they had a corner kick uh, late in the first half as well. And uh, maybe one or two mini breaks. But really no good looks for either side. Uh, I wouldn't say that. I'd say Durfee had more looks than Diamond, but I wouldn't say they were fabulous or 
that they really were big difference makers because, as you can see, we're still scoreless. So, um, you know, the wind could be playing with the ball a little bit. I mean, it, it's, it's it's almost borderline ridiculously windy right now. Uh, a gusty day here at the Durfee Stadium, Mac Aldridge Field. So uh, that can mess with the ball a little bit. It doesn't look like it was too much in that first half, especially when the ball was hit in the air. It really didn't seem to affect the trajectory at all. But, you know, on the ground, too, I mean, it, it can the wind can push the ball different directions and make it roll differently, too. So uh, that can be a factor. I don't think it was a major factor. I think just both teams... You know, we're playing decent defense and not allowing the other one in, to be honest with you. I'd say that's really the biggest difference here. Free kick coming to Durfee here from the 20. Here it comes, it's high, it's off the crossbar of the uprights for football. And that does not count for anything here in soccer, so we stay scoreless after the quick, quick free kick. You may have noticed too, we uh, did switch sides at the half. So Durfee now kicking left to right, Diamond right to left. High pop up there, gonna bounce right into the, st <laughs> into the stands. Ah, oh, losing it behind him was Juan Ferreira. Toppers did get it back. There's Sobrero. Nice floater. Yeah, you know, the wind is really just coming almost right at us now. So it's not so much coming from the south. It's really coming from the east. So that last kick that went straight across the field just totally floated. That's going out. Oh, they kept it in. I thought that went out. Sure looked like it. I think... Hilltoppers will have to throw it in, and they will. Lucky break there for Diamond. They got there just in time. It would have been a corner kick. Durfee will throw it in right into a sea of bangles. Not a great throw there. Clearing it was Cody Arruda. And now Dominic Rocha in a foot race with Nilan Nera. Nil Nilan throws it out, or kicks it out, rather. And now everybody moves up. Diamond will throw in. So because Diamond can't use their field, uh, the girls game will follow this one. So kind of a uh, a doubleheader here, a twi-night doubleheader we'll call it. They, they're supposed to start around 6. Um, so today though we're featuring the boys in day game, day soccer. And we'll have uh, the girls, there will be a rematch between these two teams um, in October, so a few weeks. And uh, in that rematch, we'll show the girls' game. So today, getting the boys on opening day, and uh, we will see the girls. Well, we'll see the girls before then, but in the rematch, we'll end up seeing the girls' game instead of the boys' game. So while we have a moment here, just uh, want to remind you all to, if you're into social media, we have uh, a sports Facebook page for Fred TV. It's called Fred TV Sports. So be sure to like and follow that page. We post uh, all kinds of great stuff on that page, including including uh, the games that we do cover. So um, if you miss them on the station, on Channel 9, when they air, you can see them 
through the links that we post on Facebook as well that go to our Vimeo page. And uh, those are in full HD. So really looks great if I do say so myself. Durfee looking for a foul and it looks like it's gonna be a corner kick for Diamond. A little bit of chirping from Alex Cabral wasn't happy. Nil and Nera questioning as well, put the hands up, but the Bengals will get a corner kick here. And it looks like Nick Silva, the sophomore, is going to be the one doing the kicking. A lefty kicker here. Here it comes towards the net. Back down towards the corner, out of play off the side. Durfee will throw it in. And this will be number eight, uh, Gabe de Oliveira. Quick throw into Cabral. Not a hard throw down the sidelines, but hey, Diamond takes it back. Trying to get it through and fighting for it. That is over the goal. Open look for Jordan Crowley, number six, who started it. And on that far side there as well, coming towards us, I think that may have been uh, Nick Silva, the sophomore, or maybe that was Dominic. I gotta see, I can't tell. No, Nick Silva's on this side. That was uh, Dominic Rocha. Lucas Souza pushing it up for his teammate. Still in play on his feet. That was Ferreira sent towards the net. No good. It's back to him. See if he can find someone else to center to. Loose ball on this side. It's going, going, going out of play. Play still going. That ball clearly went behind the yellow, and the officials did not call it. Durfee still on the offensive. Taylor Gonzalez is tripped, and he's going to get a free kick. Wow, I cannot believe they didn't call out of play. The goalie for Diamond is saying it. The ball was out of play by at least one ball with. All of Diamond is barking at the refs. Yeah, that's a bad non-call right there. They missed that one for sure. And now Gonzalez gonna get a free kick here. Bengals are gonna build a wall. This is so close, it's practically a penalty kick just with a few players in front of you. Hilltoppers with a chance to steal an early lead here because they shouldn't even have the ball. Bengals creating the wall. Right through and in. Topper is on the board in 2017. Gonzalez takes advantage. It skid right through the wall. Not a good foundation, I guess. Into the corner of the net. And you know, Ferreira was even leaning that way, and there was just nothing he could do. The ball came in so hot, I think he maybe expected it to get deflected a little more than it did. It really didn't even get deflected. It just skid right through. So Durfee takes advantage of a non-call by the officials that turned into a free kick, and now the lead. one nothing Durfee about nine minutes into this second half. So there's your first goal of 2017. That's gonna be incredibly frustrating for Diamond. As again, I mean, you know, the officials are on the field. The nearest official was basically at the 45, and he's on the ground looking into the sun. You know, we're high above, good 20 feet or so in the air, high above the field, and we could see the line. I'm sure he couldn't really even see the line. These yellow lines have faded. 
But that ball clearly went out of play. That should have been a goal kick for Diamond, and it didn't turn into that. And credit Taylor Gonzalez for just continuing on. He didn't stop like he sold it 110% to the officials that that ball stayed in play. There was no hesitancy, no stoppage. He just kept going and said, hey, they're not going to blow the whistle. I'll keep playing. I'll play on. So real good uh, awareness there to just say, you know what, I'm going to play till the whistle is blown. And Dominic Rocha on his horse, really showing some speed. Couldn't get past Gabe de Oliveira though, equally as fast. That's a floater heading wide open shot. Settling, a little chip shot. Couple players leaning over though. I don't know if that counted. I think we might have had a whistle. Yeah, for the injury here, possibly for Durfee. I don't think that's gonna count. Which is probably why Ferreira gave up on it. Looked like looked like maybe a cramp possibility. One of the players cramping up possibly. I don't know. Tough to sell where they were stretching. So no goal. Just gonna be a goal kick. That was um Gonzalo Royas on the ground, number number 10. Off the head, right back into the offensive zone for Durfee. Diamond now trying to clear it. Lucas Souza is there, no, no dice for Diamond. They'll send it to the sidelines. And out of play, should be Durfee ball, it is. play as well. Durfee will throw in again. This time sending it backwards. Maybe try to reset a bit. De Oliveira to uh, Zenedine Pina. The official getting in the way here. Having to go around him like an obstacle. Diamond got the ball back but it is now out of play. Bengals will throw in. Dylan Harrop will do the honors. Number 10. Harrop is a junior this year. One of the midfield midfielders, I should say. Not much room to move in the corner. <laughs> and it's going to be a goal kick. out of play as well. That one clearly was uh, blown out thanks to the wind. Really took a turn towards the sidelines once it was airborne. Nara sends that one out of play. Diamond will throw in again. Harrop has been a busy guy over the last <laughs> 60 seconds or so. Gonna try it a third time here. Nara using the height. One of the tallest on the field yet again. Kept in but Bounced, I guess it bounced off. So Diamond got to throw it in again. Thought that stayed in on the bounce, but that time the official close by. So that is sent deep, far, and way out of play. Kind of bounce off the hurdles. As running after it was Franco. He'll get another goal kick. Down the sidelines and out of play. That one off of Pina again, and that one definitely was pushed out by the wind again. So we're seeing a little bit of uh, the wind becoming a factor. Nice job by D. Oliveira to clear that one. It's gonna result in a corner kick, but 
it would have been a wide open shot for Nick Silva had he not cleared that one out. So well worth the corner kick. You're up one nothing. No guarantees with that. Grounder high in the air. Silva sends it back. Toppers clear it out. Deep down the field, Taylor Gonzalez is there. Rounds the corner, has some help in front, and it's good! Oh, they set that up beautifully. Gonzalez with the assist, Sobrero with the goal. Uh, no, that was Royas, number 10, with the goal. 2-0 Durfee. Beautiful second goal by the Hilltoppers coming here with about 25 minutes left in the game. They're up two zip now over the Bengals. That one was legitimate, if you will. You know, again, if you're just joining us, that first goal uh, should have probably never happened. Uh, that's an ugly collision there. That first goal probably should not have happened because of a missed call, but it did. Now this one though legitimate for the Hilltoppers. You see one of the Bengals there, slow to get up. That was a tough collision. That's actually Dominic Rocha Looks like he, it was him and uh, Nillen that might have collided. It looked like his Nillen went up, gave him a high five, checked on him right away. But yeah, the Hilltoppers making sure Dominic's okay. Bengals don't want to lose him, that's for sure. He's again, Coach Chikara was very high on uh, on Mr. Rocha, so don't want to see him go down. The Bengals, one of their best players there. Diamond looking to answer. That's Cody Arruda, number seven, and he loses it, taken right away. There's Sobrero, and he's gonna try to turn things around here, send it back the other direction. Gonzalez to Pina. Now to Ethan Williams, it's blocked. Nice block by the Bengals, they'll turn it around. Out of play, blue ball. And yes, it is blue. Again, diamond wearing navy. Be interesting to see uh, if their football jerseys have changed as well, because uh, totally different look for the Bengals. The black and orange was uh, the classic colors, but we're seeing the navy soccer uniforms here today for the first time. They do look sharp, I mean, don't get me wrong, but you think of diamond, I just think of uh, black and orange instantly. It's just been that way forever. So I'm interested to see if football has new unis as well. We'll see them soon enough. Of course, Coach Steve Wynarski for the Bengals. Leading the way again for football. Had such a great season last year. The Bengals did, and uh, you know Thanksgiving was a good day for Diamond as well. Diamond beat New Bedford Volk last year on Thanksgiving, forty to fourteen. And the Hilltoppers won on Thanksgiving as well last year. Of course, we know that. But the Bengals football season was an incredibly successful one last year. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing them again soon. 
Again, we're waiting confirmation as to where the varsity home games will actually be played um, because the field, their field is not usable. So uh, be sure to, again, follow this Facebook page that we have, Fred TV Sports. We post all that information there. And uh, as soon as we know where the football games will be played, we will let you know. I'm going to be following up with Coach Winarski this week, so uh, later this week. So be sure to like and follow our Facebook page, Fred TV Sports. That's the kind of information you'll find there. You'll find some great photos, some great news. We forward a lot of articles. We post stuff, stuff up there as well. Uh, and in addition, we always, always post the games that we do here as well. Bengals will throw in. Halfway through the second half from Durfee. Evan Massoud with you here as the Hilltoppers and Bengals square off in the Fall River rivalry game to begin the season. Durfee up 2-0 as the away team. Diamond the host team in this first matchup between the two teams. They will square off again in a few weeks, the beginning of October. Durfee will be the host team in that game. Both goals for Durfee coming here in this second half. It was a scoreless first 40 minutes of play. Going down there for Diamond was Cody Arruda, but they didn't call anything. Staying up, and it's going to go in. Ferreira was out of position. Williams had to do everything he could to stay on his feet. That was incredible. I thought he was going to face plant. Instead, he stays up, made an S curve around the defender and around the goalie, and sends it in for goal number three. Hilltoppers. Lead it three zip. That one unassisted to Ethan Williams. You know, Ferreira, a sophomore, again, he was thrown into this position uh, because the senior keeper for Diamond uh, shattered his ankle preseason, and so his season came to an end before it even began. Uh, so the Bengals had to go to the backup, and it uh, could be some inexperience there. I mean, probably would have been a wiser decision to stay in your position rather than come up. Some goalies play more aggressive than others, but in that situation, probably would have been better to stay in your position rather than try to come up and get the ball when you had a defender right there to help you. And there's another feed. Williams gets free. Trying to clear it out are the Bengals, and they will. That was Juan Riasco. Riasco. Durfee with it now on the far side with possession again. A bouncer in front. Hook. Kick in the air. Ball is still loose. Coming back the other way and fading away. Cut off by Lucas Santos. Gabe de Oliveira with it. There's Williams, sends it through the uprights. Low line drive kick for Ferreira. Gonzalez got it to uh, Nilanera with the headbutt. And now Durfee will kind of reset a little bit. They'll send it up the field. Loose ball, Ferreira 
Oh, wow, put the foot in front of, not a wise move there, young man, no way. That ball almost skipped right through. Gotta go down with the glove for those. Already trailing three nothing, don't wanna let another one through. That was a dangerous play right there. That's gonna go out to the left on the sideline, so it'll be a throw in. But a bouncing ball like that, you gotta get low on those. Don't ever wanna play those with the foot. Too many bad things can happen. That's out of play. And I think the wind pushing that one too, so Diamond will get to throw it in. That's coming out of play as well. Riasco was trying to find his, his teammate there, but clearing it out was Alex Cabral. Right back to Curtis Mello, number two. Down to the turf went Lucas Santos. He's back up, no problem. Slipped on his own, slipped on the turf, lost his footing. Back to Gonzalez, and Toppers will move it up ahead. Dylan Parker there, number five. Back to Gonzalez. Gonzalez, it looks like that Sobrero. And it's out of heading out of play. That was I'm sorry. I keep saying Sabrero. That was uh, Royas, number ten. Towards the net, cleared out by the D. Still there though. That's a, that's a long kick. Stayed in bounds. Settling at midfield, so big, big play there by the Diamond D to clear that out. I haven't seen uh, Dominic Rocha on the field for Diamond since that collision, the last opportunity to switch out. I believe is when he had moved out and went to the bench. So I don't know if it's a precaution, but um, right now he's on the bench. We don't see him in his position. Little floater towards the net, this could be trouble. That time played nicely by Ferreira. Good job playing the hop. Big booming kick. So we're coming down to the wire here. Just over 10 minutes or so left in this one. Again, the Hilltoppers up three nothing thanks to three second half goals. After a scoreless first half, Hilltoppers looking for more. Williams with the ball, passing it now. But Williams just, he, he netted that last goal. Good block by Diamond. Gabe de Oliveira trying to keep it in Diamond's zone and grab a fourth goal for Durfee. Centering pass towards the net. Swatted out of play, Lucas Souza letting it settle. Looks like he's gonna take a shot. Gonna recenter it. Oh, and a swing and a miss, if you will. Going down hard was Royas. Looked like he might have had an open shot there. Not able to take it, though he missed. Call that a whiff. Gonzalez now with it.
Hilltoppers offensive uh, pressure has been a lot better in the second half than in that first half. They really have uh, moved the ball much better. And again, it could be Diamond's defense getting tired as well. But um, Durfee has really done a nice job offensively in the second half. That one out of play. Deerfield throw in this time. That's D. Oliveira. And we got a couple subs coming in for Hilltoppers. Jonah Andrade and William Sobrero heading out. Looks like they will probably be done for the rest of the afternoon. And Gabe D. Oliveira as well. So coming in for Durfee, this is number 13, Nathan Kucher. He'll be throwing it in. Kucher is a sophomore. Durfee's still with the ball. And Ferreira blocks that one. Nice job diving to his right to snare it. A little roller that he was able to get to. A good stop there. Oh, gonna go behind, <laughs> almost got behind Durfee's keeper there. Franco came up a little too far on it and took a big bounce. Able to corral it though. And the wind, look at that. That is the first time it's really died. Didn't even make it to midfield. Bengals going back with it, going the wrong direction now. Durfee taking it back. Diamond ball. Jordan Vasconcellos, number 16, will throw it in. Up it goes, onside. Ethan Williams still fighting. Towards the net it goes. Royas will settle it. Takes a shot, wide to the left. Good ball control there for the Hilltoppers. Again, Royas especially able to settle on it. He got free, was able to wait, almost take a free kick. And It'll be a corner kick for the Hilltoppers. Eight minutes to play in game one of the season. Durfee looking to start off with a W and looking like it's gonna be that way. That one's staying low on the ground. And it's into the net. Another goal for the Hilltoppers, make it four nothing. And that was Royas who got the feed. He was in the right spot and he just chipped it in. So he does get one. That one snuck right by. So a 4 nothing lead with 8.01 on the clock for the Hilltoppers in game one against their inner city rival, Diamond Regional. That pretty much puts the icing on the cake right there. Even two goals is tough to overcome, but four with eight minutes, mm, not likely. Would like to see the Bengals uh, at least get one goal. Looks like we got a timeout. Indeed we do. We got a quick timeout here. But it would be nice to see uh, the Bengals at least grab one goal here before uh, 
the end of the game just for pride, I guess you could say. Because uh, the defense really is taking a hit in the second half. While we have the break in the action here. Kind of give you an idea of uh, what's on tap. Some of the upcoming games that we're looking to cover here on Fred TV. And again, we have football this Friday. Then we'll have, uh, we have some big three action, believe it or not, already starting next week. <laughs> Uh, Thursday, there's field hockey here at Durfee against New Bedford and boys soccer against New Bedford. So looking forward to those games as the Whalers come to town. Durfee's football team is home for the first three weeks of the season. So uh, we're home this week against Somerset Berkeley and then next week Taunton and then the following week Wellesley, all 7 o'clock on Friday nights. So uh, big three action coming up next week. And then uh, the following Monday, the 18th here, uh, we'll see the Diamond Boys again as they host Bishop Conley over at Britland Park where their home games will be played this season. So we uh, have that one on the schedule as well, another inner city battle. But this one, a little more important, uh, it's not so much a league game per se, but it is a Mayflower battle between... Uh, two teams in the same league basically so same division so it's uh, always a fun game as well just like this one so out of the timeout Diamond throwing it in here after it went out of play nice job by our official there ducking out of the way Diamond ball as Colin Mello throws it in. More subs for the Hilltopper. That was Nathan Kucher. We also see uh, Joao Ramos. Number 14. He's on this near side as well. say after 10 years this uh, this field does not look too bad I mean there's definitely some spots where you can see where um, you know where it's more worn out than others I mean in particular the pocket of course you know with football and how often the middle of the field gets used but um, you know walking on it earlier I mean it's still I mean nothing's gonna beat grass right nothing's gonna beat grass but there's still some spring in it it's still a soft surface it's not that bad Hilltop was looking for a fifth goal no good uh, but the field it's not that bad the, the practice field is definitely uh, in better shape because it doesn't get as much use as this main field does um, but for a 10 year old field and stadium here it's 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 really held up pretty good. The track still looks fantastic. It hasn't faded in color at all. The lanes, everything looks fantastic. And yeah, and again, the field is really held up quite nicely as well. Towards the net. Loose ball, collision with the goalie, and we have another player down. That's number 15 for Diamond, Nick Silva. He went right into the goaltender for Durfee. He and Franco collided in the air. Seen some pretty good collisions today on opening day. Both teams leaving it all out on the field. And Hilltop is going to throw it in, it appears, or are we going to get a free kick from here? Let's see. That's going to be a kick. Here we go. 
Dylan Nero going across to Alex Cabral. Hilltoppers pushing it up again. Running into the wind, down the sideline. Oh, missing it. <laughs> Dylan Parker didn't see it. Turned around too late and went out of play. That was a beautiful feed from Ramos. And Parker just wasn't ready for it or wasn't expecting it, I guess, because there's a really good setup right there. That's going to squibble out of play as well. This time it'll be diamond ball again. Out of play. This time, let's see, Durfee ball this time. Kucher will throw in. Things winding down here on uh, opening day for the boys. Three and a half to play. Hilltopper is going to start off 2017 with a W as they lead 4 0 here. Just kind of kind of run out the clock here. Again, Diamond, I'm sure, would like to get a goal just to feel good. But another chance at another goal, and it's going to go wide to the right. Two Hilltoppers were there for the setup, but. Couldn't find the back of the net. <laughs> Bengals will throw in. Nara lost it, but again, like the tallest player on the field, long legs, able to really get some long strides when he's running and able to get there before it got into the hands of one of the Bengals. The ball control was much improved here in the second half for Durfee and I'm convinced that's also why the goals came because uh, they were able to really press a lot better and, and really control what they were doing. So uh, really nice adjustments, kind of give you a little bit of a wrap I guess you could say uh, the clock stopped at the two minute mark here so we're in stoppage time uh, but really I mean the Hilltoppers looked much better in the second half they did take advantage of a couple uh, errors one by the official one by the goalie for Diamond but uh, they really kept that offensive pressure throughout these last 30 minutes or so and if the beginning of the second half was still a little slow but the th last 30 minutes we've seen 90 percent of the play on this right side here with Durfee on the offensive so uh, they really did a nice job at capitalizing and uh, making the most of their time in diamonds end of the field so, so we play out these final few seconds of stoppage time And there it is. There really wasn't much for the second half in terms of the stoppage time at all. So the Hilltoppers and the Bengals opening day game comes to a close. The final score here from Mac Aldridge Field, 4-0 in favor of Durfee. So they did end last season on a heartbreaking note, a late penalty kick that cost them a win in the playoffs. Here today, they come back with a vengeance against Diamond, and they start 2017 with the win again. 4 nothing the final score. These two teams will square off again the beginning of October, and, of course, we'll have that game for you as well. Thrilled to have a new season of high school sports underway. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next for football opening night, which will air on Monday. Till then, Evan Massoud signing off from Durfee High School.